Hello, this is Jensen Stanton and Maria Bell's presentation for Math 313 Probability with Dr. Knudsen, Non-Monotone Transformations of Random Variables. So we're going to first start out by talking about what is a monotone function. So a monotone function is a function that is either always increasing or is always decreasing. Non-monotone functions are functions that is that are increasing sometimes and decreasing other times. So we think about a derivative. If we took the derivative of, for example, y equals x cubed, we're going to get a derivative of y equals 3x squared, which is always going to be positive, which means that y equals x cubed is a monotone function because it is always increasing. So which of these functions is monotone and which of these functions is non-monotone? So this function here on the left is a monotone function because we see that it is always increasing. Although it um, has a point of zero there um, in the middle, it is still always um, increasing when it is changing, as opposed to the graph on the right, which is a non-monotone function, because as we can see, it starts out decreasing, and then it flattens out, and then it increases and decreases again. So it is a non-monotone function because it is not um, consistent in its change. So now we're going to do a review of transformations of random variables for monotonic functions. So let's say I have the PDF 3x plus 2 for x between 0 and 2, and I want to transform y equals x squared. So that's going to be my g of y. So as we can see from this uh, screenshot of the graph here, it is always increasing, so we can call it a monotone function. So this is the magic formula to get um, our transformation in terms of y. So to get the PDF of y, we need to take um, the PDF of x with g inverse of y times the absolute value of the derivative of our g inverse of y. So now we go ahead and find g inverse. We find that x is equal to the square root of y. Then we can go ahead and take the derivative of our inverse, which is going to be equal to 1 over 2 times the square, square root of y. And then we can go back to this magic formula and plug in what we found. So we know that this is our PDF. So we have an x. We want to plug in our new transformation of y. So I have 3 times the square root of y plus 2. So that's what this part is excuse me, times the derivative of our invert g inverse of y. And that is the 1 over 2 times the square root of y. So then when we do some simplification, we multiply this through, and we get 3 halves plus 1 over the square root of y for y between 0 and 4. Um, an important clarification that we should make, so if we look at this graph, this is the transformation of it, um, is y has, cannot include 0, um, because if we plug in 0, then we're going to get 1 over 0, which is undefined, so it has to be greater than 0 and between 4. As we can see um, by this function, which is this PDF, um, the graph is ever approaching 0, but it never actually hits uh, 0. Uh, the way that we found these bounds is that um, we took our bounds for x, which is between 0 and 2, and we plugged in y, so then we'll have y, the new transformation, which is x equals square root of y. So we plugged in 0, um, so the square root of y is between 0 and 2, and then we can square all this inequality, and we'll get uh, y is between 0 and 4. So how do we do a non-monotone transformation? The short answer is that we want to split it up. So here I have um, an example function. So let's pretend our PDF is the graph of 1 half x squared. So as we can see, it's a parabola with a vertex of 0. Um, and for between 0 and 4, we have this shaded pink region with the purple line in the middle. So what we can see from this is from negative 2 to 0, our function is decreasing, but then from 0 to 2, it's increasing. So the way that we do a non-monotone transformation is similar to how we do a monotone transformation, except we have to split it up and find these two different, um, these the transformation of these two different lines where um, the PDF is decreasing and then it's increasing. So now Maria is going to walk us through an example of how we do a non-monotone transformation with a sample problem.
Now we're going to work through an example of a non-monotone transformation of random variables. In this example, we're going to let the PDF of x be x squared divided by 4 when x is between negative 2 and 3. And we're going to find the PDF of y for the transformation y equals x squared. So the first step that we're going to do is graph the transformation y equals x squared. Notice that on this interval from x between negative 2 and 3, this is non-monotone. That's because it changes from decreasing to increasing. Notice as well that from the interval of x between negative 2 and 2, that this is not a one-to-one -one transformation. However, on the interval x between 2 and 3, this is a one-to-one -one transformation. So for this one-to-one -one interval, that would be similar to a monotone function. If we just took that piece, it's always going increasing, so it's monotone. But for this section over here, we have to account that it changes from decreasing to increasing. So to do that, we're going to split this problem into two parts. First, we're going to work on finding the PDF of y for the 2 to 1 portion. So this is when x is between negative 2 and 2. And since our transformation is y equals x squared, that's going to be when our y is between 0 and 4. So to start, we're going to use our definition of CDF, cumulative distribution function. So the CDF of y equals the probability of y less than or equal to little y by the definition of CDF. And then we're going to replace the big Y by x squared because of our, our transformation in this example is y equals x squared. Next, we're going to break this down into two components because x has to be between the square root of y and the negative square root of y. And then going back to our definition of CDF, cumulative distribution function, we get CDF of x, we'll plug in the square root of y, minus the CDF of x, plug in the negative square root of y. And this is because we're taking the big chunk right here, subtracting by a smaller chunk to get what's in between. And that's going to be this portion right here. So what do we do once we have the CDF definition of y in terms of the CDF of x? Well, recall that to get from a PDF to CDF, we integrate, but to get from a CDF to PDF, we derive. So to find the PDF of y, we're going to take the derivative of the CDF of y. And based on what we just found, we will then take the derivative of this portion right here. Using the first fundamental theorem of calculus, as well as the chain rule, we'll get the PDF of x is where we'll plug in square root of y, and then because of the chain rule, we have to also take the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. So we get 1 half y, the negative 1 half, minus, and then here we do the PDF of x plugging in the negative square root of y, and again, we have to take the derivative of what's in the parentheses, so we get negative 1 half y, the negative 1 half. Then, because of the negative and the negative, this turns into a positive. And then recall that our PDF of x equals x squared divided by 4. So then everywhere that we see an x, we're going to be plugging in the square root of y for this first portion. So we have the square root of y squared divided by 4. And then we just keep our 1 half y, the negative 1 half. Then we're going to add. And then again, we're going to take our PDF of x and just plug in the negative square root of y everywhere we see an x. So we have negative square root of y squared divided by 4 times 1 half y, the negative 1 half. And then we simplify that. Square root of y squared is just y. And then once we multiply the fractions together, we'll get y one half divided by eight plus y to the one half divided by eight. And this simplifies to the square root of y divided by four. And remember that this is on the interval from y between zero and four. So now that we've already found the PDF of y on our function for when it's non-monotone, now we get to find it for when it is monotone. So this is going to be the one-to-one -one part of the transformation that occurs on the interval y between 4 and 9. Again, we're going to start with our definition of CDF for y by finding that the CDF of y is the probability that big Y is less than or equal to little y. Replace big Y with x squared, since that's the definition of our transformation. Take the square root, and then using our CDF definition again, we see that this right here is the definition of the CDF of x. 
Again, we're going to find the PDF of y by taking the derivative of the CDF of y. Then using our definition that's here, we take the derivative, so we have the PDF of x plugging in square root of y, and then because of the chain rule, we have to multiply it by 1 half y, the negative 1 half. Recall that our PDF of x is x squared divided by 4. And then everywhere we see an x, we plug in a square root of y. And then when we simplify that, we get y over 4 times 1 half y, the negative 1 half. And then when we simplify that, we get the square root of y divided by 8. And this is the PDF for y when y is between 4 and 9. Just for a little refresher, recall that we could have also found the PDF of y for this 1 to 1, since it, that section of the transformation is monotone, we could have used our theorem that we have here that gives us our PDF of y. To do that, we just have to recall all the elements within this equation. So we have g of x equals the x squared. This is our transformation. g inverse y equals the square root of y, because you take the square root. And then our PDF of x and then to take the absolute value, the derivative of g inverse y, which gives us the 1 half y, the negative 1 half. And then when we plug it into our equation, we get this here. And we can then drop the absolute values on the next step because y is between 4 and 9, and it will be positive in that interval. And then we get the same definition that we got, or same solution, excuse me, as when we solved it using the definitions of CDFs. Thus, our final answer for the PDF of y equals x squared is g of y different for splitting into two parts for when y is between 0 and 4 and y between 4 and 9.